ultra processed foods, what are they? A just published study, sorry, is revealing the serious consequences of eating so-called ultra processed foods. Ultra processed foods are those loaded with salt, sugar, fat, and plenty of other additives. They're not great for you. In the United States, 61% of the adult's total diet comes from ultra-processed foods. In Canada, it's 62%, and the United Kingdom, that proportion is 63%. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, one of the most prestigious medical journals, calculated the 14 higher risk of early death for each 10% increase in the proportion of ultra-processed foods consumed. The thing is, Americans, Canadians and British eat six times more ultra-processed foods, so the risk of dying young from heart disease, stroke, diabetes or even cancer goes up to 84%. Another study in the American Journal for Preventive Medicine has found an association of 10% of early death. Researchers say that ultra-processed food corresponds to about 22% of early death from cardiovascular diseases and reducing its consumption by 10% could prevent 11% of the premature cardiovascular death. Dr. Nielsen, author of this study, said that the consumption of ultra-processed foods is associated with many disease outcomes, such as obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, some cancers, and it represents a significant cause of preventable and premature death. Policies against the consumption of these products are urgently needed. A BBC documentary on ultra-processed foods showed a trial carried out with two twins in the United Kingdom, in which for two weeks one ate ultra-processed food and the other did not. At the end of the 15 days, the twin in the ultra-processed food gained weight, the other one lost weight and the risk factors of cardiovascular disease and diabetes also decreased. The girl on ultra-processed food also reported headaches, lack of energy and moodiness. Many of the negative effects of this type of food are silent. In children, the deterioration of the arteries that will lead to their clogging later in life has already begun, without causing symptoms, progressing silently until it's too late. Abdominal fat indicates an asymptomatic inflammatory state of teenagers and sooner or later they will develop type 2 diabetes, heart disease, joint pain, immune or neurological disorders. And, as doctors warned during the pandemic, hypertensive and diabetic people were at higher risk. Well, indeed, all major consumers of ultra-processed food were at increased risk. It is hard not to notice when I'm going to the supermarket in the relationship between body shape and the amount of ultra-processed products each person buys. When I'm going with my daughter to the supermarket, I feel how it's difficult to be a father, to be torn between giving her the poison she wants and see her happy or protecting her from this plastic food and see her sad. But, as my grandmother used to say, it's better for our children to cry than for us to cry for them. Researchers speculate that the food additives such as food coloring, the packaging releasing chemicals into food during storage, and the processing itself, such as cooking at high temperatures, may be the factors that negatively affect our health. The first comprehensive assessment of the association between cancer and ultraprocessed foods was published in February of this year, 2023. This study was carried out in the United Kingdom with 200,000 citizens, with a mean ultraprocessed food consumption of 23% in the total diet, ranged from 9 to 40%. They found an increased risk of 30% of ovarian cancer for each 10% of ultra-processed food content of total diet. This means that a teenage girl that eats up to 40% of junk food has up to 120% increased risk of ovarian cancer. Other cancers that also increased dramatically were breast cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer and B-cell lymphoma. This is the first time we have solid evidence that ultra-processed foods increase the risk of cancer. But do you know what ultra-processed foods are? 
Ultra-processed foods are cheap and very tasty edibles, ready to eat, highly processed until they are almost unrecognizable from their original form. Industry scientists manipulate this texture and composition to be very addictive by studying our brain primitive response to food. They often add food additives to increase taste sensitivity such as monosodium glutamate, decrease the brain regulation of society and colors to get children's attention. There is a simple recipe to success that almost everyone uses, which is to add a lot of salt, sugar and roasted fat. This concoction is super addictive, tasty and hard to resist. But too much salt can increase heart disease and stomach cancer, too much sugar leads to obesity and diabetes, and roasted fats raise cholesterol and clogs our arteries. So these ultra-processed foods are high in bad fat, sugar and salt and low in fiber. They don't serve as food for our gut probiotic allies that boost our immunity but are very attractive for opportunistic bacteria that can harm us. And the other food additives such as monosodium glutamate, food coloring agents, emulsifiers, artificial sweeteners as aspartame linked to hundreds of diseases, added gluten or other high-risk allergenic proteins, high fructose corn syrup, partial hydrogenated fats, and hundreds of suspicious chemicals as triclosan, sulfites, nitrates, carrageenan. Over 100,000 molecules have been created since 1940, substance that never existed before. Higher exposure of acrylamide and acrolane, industrial chemicals formed during high temperature cooking procedures, have neurotoxic, carcinogenic and mutagenic effects. Government agencies regulate the amount of these chemicals present in the ultra-processed foods but are the maximum allowable concentrations really safe? Phthalates and bisphenols are endocrine disrupting chemicals that can cause breast cancer, damage DNA, nervous, endocrine and immune systems. They are commonly found in plastic wrap, can lining and plastics that contain food. They move on to drinks and food as higher urinary concentrations of phthalates and bisphenols have been detected in people with higher ultra-processed food consumption. They are not real food. Your body knows it, but not you. They are cheaper and tastier than real food, and like drugs, they change our brain, causing us to reject the taste of real food. And once a child starts eating ultra-processed foods, he or she starts rejecting all vegetables one by one. And because they eat more times a day than adults, they easily exceed the amount of ultra-processed foods ingested per day by an adult, as snacks are the Trojan horse. Take a look at some examples of ultra-processed products to understand why. Ultra-processed food products Most breakfast cereals, cakes, cookies, bread except traditional or homemade, cereal bars, chips, frozen pasta, pizza except homemade pizza, instant noodles, candies, chocolates, soft drinks, sugared milk drinks, yogurts with color, chocolate or cereals, ice creams except homemade ice creams, processed cheeses like cream cheeses, sauces, nuggets, hot dogs, burgers except homemade burgers, canned soup, baby foods, instant baby formulas. The easiest way to memorize what is ultra-processed is everything that comes packaged in a plastic, which didn't exist a hundred years ago, and lasts a long time in the shelf, with some exceptions that we'll see in the moment. They are lightly processed foods with added water, salt or sugar. For example, artisan bread only have four ingredients – flour, water, oil, mother yeast and salt. It's a processed food, but when it's added emulsifiers, colorings, gluten, it becomes ultra-processed. Other examples of processed foods are corn flakes and plain oats flakes. When the manufacturer adds sugar, flavorings, colorings, they become ultra-processed breakfast cereals. Let's see some examples. Hot flakes, raw pasta, homemade rice, artisan bread, plain yogurt, homemade ice cream, homemade cake without colorings, 
homemade pizza, homemade burger with only meat, homemade food with natural ingredients, canned fish, canned fruits and vegetables, tofu, butter, olive oil, lard, vinegar, starches, flowers, sugar, honey, soy milk, traditional cheeses, smoked ham, smoked salmon, bacon. Processed food is any food that was slightly transformed. It may include simply cut, washed, heated, pasteurized, canned, frozen, cooked, dried or dehydrated. Last, unprocessed food is everything we eat as it came from nature, as we've eaten for thousands or millions of years. Eggs, meat, fish, seafood, fruit, seeds, vegetables, whatever. We should be eating a combination of processed foods and unprocessed foods. Fresh fruits and vegetables are packed with unique compounds important to being healthier and stronger, like vitamin C and antioxidants that help our epigenome to repair our genes and live longer. Our digestive system needs raw food to function properly. On the other hand, processed foods help us get more micronutrients. For example, you can get more lycopene from a homemade tomato soup made with fresh tomatoes than from eating them raw. Lycopene is a natural sunscreen, regulates cholesterol and prevents prostate cancer. Avoid wrapping plastic film around the food, put always paper between the two. Do not buy meat or fruit with plastic film in, in contact with them. But if you don't have any option, just scrap and wash its surface. And also avoid canned beans, instead prefer beans in a glass bottle. If you have kids, replace ultra-processed food by real food. For example, instead of breakfast cereals, make some hot flakes with nuts prepared at home, or a plain yogurt with granola and blueberries, or a fresh squeezed orange juice rich in vitamin C with scrambled eggs and a slice of real bread. Between meals, teach them to eat fruit, vegetables, carrot or celery sticks, prepare some guacamole or hummus to dip them in, or just some ice cream without food additives, without food coloring, sweeteners or f other chemicals. Just ice cream made by you or a reliable ice cream shop. Prepare real meals with fresh or frozen vegetables. Cook fish or meat. Learn to prepare healthy saucers at home. At first, Everyone will go over to these edible drugs called ultra-processed foods. But as the brain rewires, the craving will disappear and everyone will feel with more energy and focus and with a better skin as well. But it will be so much easier if we didn't have to deal with these tempting ads on TV and the internet. Like the biblical story of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, they entice us to take a bite. We are more protected from alcohol and tobacco than from these edible drugs. And children and teenagers are the biggest victims. Shouldn't our elected politicians protect us? And do you know why are these products allowed? I will explain in a simplified way what happens. The food industry doesn't need to prove that the product it creates don't have side effects on health. Drugs are regulated by government agencies, but ultra-processed foods are not. The food additives they use, like aspartame, are approved for food use through scientific studies, but they are either made by the company that created them or another company that received money from the manufacturer to test. Impartiality is not guaranteed, and as we all know, money is the boss. A review of published studies carried out by Professor Millstone of University of Sussex found a relationship between study founding and study outcomes. The studies that show that aspartame was harmful were founded by non-profit sources, while 99% of the studies paid by chemical corporations that manufacture and sell aspartame said it was safe. 
as others said before, the industry design and conduct studies that provide reassuring evidence. The question is, how many food additives, processing and packaging techniques would continue to be used if only scientific studies from unbiased sources would consider it? What are the real safety doses of aspartame, sucralose and other food additives? Like tobacco, smoking a cigarette doesn't kill us, but its consumption over many years can already be harmful. And what are the possible interaction effects between them in our body? The mixture of aspartame, sucralose, emulsifiers, food colorants could have a negative synergic reaction on our health that is totally unknown. The regulatory agencies are controlled by the industry. For example, the European Medicines Agency receives 89% of its funding from the Big Pharma. In America, the FDA receives 65%, and agency directors move between them and the industry they regulate. In Europe, the European Food Safety Authority regulates food and supplements, and 46% of all experts of this agency have a financial conflict of interest situation with the agribusiness and food industries. And for close the circle of control over science, many medical journals have a substantial income from pharmaceutical companies, from the purchasing of advertisings, reprints, and sponsoring of supplements. Science have been hijacked in the food and pharmaceutical sector. Many politicians are shareholders of these companies, or their political parties receive donations and funds from them. And many shareholders in the food industry are shareholders in the pharmaceutical industry. These people make up less than 1% of the population, but they hold a huge chunk of the world's wealth, making money by selling tasty edible junk and then selling drugs and healthcare. And stopping this profitable dynamic is extremely difficult in a money-driven world. As this whole world revolved around money and power for the last centuries or even millennia, we are unlikely to see the situation ends, unless you and I, educate by our example, teach our children, share information and videos like this one with everyone, and pressure politicians to change. After all, we are 99% of the population. If we came together, we can change the world quickly, because there is enough money in food for everyone. This world just needs to rearrange itself in another way. It's much cheaper and easier to buy food and heat up in microwaves. It's difficult, hard to resist to ultra-processed food in the world surrounded by temptation. And if we are sad, anxious or lonely, we'll get high on heavy wall drugs for sure, but we don't need to be extremists and we can have a day a week to eat our edible drugs, but our first rule should be make your home a temple to be protected from this poison. And we humans are such adaptable creatures. In less time than we imagine, we'll be healthier and stronger. But I believe to have success in this transition, it's important to learn how to prepare delicious food. Because if what you cook, it tastes worse than ultra-processed food, it would be very difficult to resist them. So, take some cooking courses, go to some good restaurants, where you can taste what kitchen artists can create with real food, with healthy ingredients. There are so much amazing and delicious and healthy cooking styles in this world. Why to get poison? Just follow my motto, peel more and unwrap less.